Welcome to Good Morning Hospitality, your one-stop shop for the latest news, noteworthy trends, and thought-provoking discussions across the industry. From hotels to short-term rentals to all things travel and hospitality, you'll find each episode equips you with the information that you need to start your week. Join us on Good Morning Hospitality every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. Wow. Wow. New intro, who this? I love it. We look official now. We do look official. It's definitely like... So, by the way, for everybody that's joining us, if you caught that new intro, let us know what you think. Yeah, the hotel crew coming through. I like it. Yes, exactly. All our hotel lovers, all our hotel workers, all of that. Um, Yeah, no, really, really great. Uh, So, that being said, why don't we do a quick roll call and see where everyone is joining us in from. Uh, Looks like we've got Jeremy. Jeremy is actually joining us from Israel, which, by the way... uh, Thank you so much for joining us right now. That's incredible. Uh, first here. Yes. Stay safe. Yes. Stay so safe. Good. yes, please stay safe. Definitely. Always continuing to check in with you. Um, but everybody else, let us know where you're joining in, in from, whether it's the U.S., other places around the world. Uh, it's always so exciting to see, you know, because we, we got lots of international friends, yeah. too. I think last episode I saw like over 20 countries checking in. So let's see if mm-hmm. we can beat that today. So let us know what country you're at or city. Uh, we love seeing it and seeing the support around the globe. And we're happy yeah. to bring you some interesting news. Yeah. And let us know what you want to hear about as well in the comments. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's been it's been a really um interesting week. Oh, look, we got um Esteban from Buenos Aires. I love Buenos Aires. Uh, uh, Raphael, where are you Raphael. joining us from today? Yeah, Raphael. Joining the crew. Let us know. Let us know. Um, well, I'm joining from very foggy Los Angeles, by the way. I know you can't tell yeah. by my background, but. And I'm here from what we say is freezing cold Miami of 65 degrees. So Stop it's, it. it's going to snow. I think I got my that snow is- jacket ready. <laughs> That is cold. We are so spoiled. We are spoiled. I definitely have to say. Um, Oh, we got some Miami. Okay, cool. We got lots of people in the house here. Um, Well, uh, now that we've done a little bit of a roll call, please definitely continue to let us know where you're joining us in from. But why don't we just go ahead and start diving into some topics? Because we have some really interesting um, conversations to Mm -hmm. have today. Uh, Oh, Los Angeles. Okay, perfect. Oh my gosh, Stella's still in bed. Thank you for joining us. (laughs) Thanks for joining us from bed, bed, Stella. I would still be in bed too, Stella, if I could. Oh, wait, which valley? That valley? Valley up north? Like that. London. I love seeing everyone here. (laughs) So great. Okay. Um, So interesting. Um, Why don't we go ahead and and talk about the all inclusive resorts? Yeah, they're Uh, popping up everywhere. Popping up everywhere. Well, I mean, you know, look, they kind of have always been around to a certain extent but right now what's been interesting is seeing all the bigger brands really kind of double downing on their all-inclusive resorts considering the current time and the economy with inflation they're actually finding that all-inclusive resorts are proving to be very attractive for consumers and it makes sense um uh, you've got marriott marriott was um I thought that was also really interesting. I mean, they, they're currently working on its first Ritz Carlton all inclusive resort, um, which is going to be pretty interesting. They've got a W hotel, all inclusive resort. That's going to be opening up in Brazil. Um, or it already opened, um, in Brazil. Uh, it's opening in 2025. Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. Um, but it's, it's Hyatt Hilton, um, IHG. They've all gotten in on the game. What are you thinking about all of this? I like seeing it. Everyone's starting to get involved. But what I did notice is there's not many in the U.S. There's a lot more in the Caribbean and Central America and other Mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. And so I started looking into why. I used to work at a resort called the Eden Rock Hotel in Miami Beach. Yes. And the owners are from Mexico. And they own several of these um, across Central America. And they tried to do it in the United States and found very quickly that the labor was too expensive to be able to do it so you start seeing this in other countries that you're able to because the model's very different so we all know when we go to all-inclusive everything's included in the price right Mm -hmm. generally yeah there's no upselling in restaurants there's no like specials to sell you that you get whatever is there maybe you buy some alcohol packages but in talking to some of those directors of finance they're like steve it's very different for you as a director of food and beverage it's here's how many people you're coming every day 
this is what they're allocated to spend every day. So that's your budget on what you can use for buying food. Now Ooh. go upsell liquor packages. That's how you can make some extra money. But really, Ooh. I want you as a director of food and beverage to just make sure they have an awesome experience versus the U.S. It's how can I sell more bottles of water, more wine, more upsells, yeah. of great specials and high performing food. So two different models. But like I think you said, as I have a family, I like going on cruises because everything's yeah, yeah. included. And so totally. I'd love to see more all inclusives popping up. Yeah. Well, I love that you also broke down um, the business model behind the scenes and understanding why it does better in certain markets than others. I mean, even just looking at it from a, a consumer perspective, you know, it certainly makes sense that, okay, yes, maybe in certain um, like uh, beach leisure destinations where it just makes more sense to just kind of like stay at the resort and do have that whole experience. Mm -hmm. um, but, but again, you also bring up another great point as far as like the family aspect. It's like really nice to know that like, I've already paid for this. This is how much it's going to be. It's not going to necessarily be. And then plus, and then plus, and then plus. Now that's not to say that like, you can't have a different type of vacation, but I think that this is, um, what we're seeing is these bigger brands are really understanding that there is a market for that. And people mm -hmm. do want to kind of know what they're paying for before they get into it. Yeah. I love it. I, I like seeing them doing, it. I think it's what we talked about a little bit last week, kind of with like residences, yeah. like people like the brands yeah. they like. And yeah. I'm sure they wish they could experience those things. No, and, definitely. you know, and talking with some others, and I see some comments coming up, like Raphael mentioning exchange rates also influence those things, Ooh, yes. right? Because you get really a lot more point. value for the dollar in certain countries. Mm -hmm. um, but I love it. I, I hope I, we see more and more of this, especially at the high end, right? I yeah. like to see some of the ultra lux popping up, the brands that we know and enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's going to be really fascinating to see, like if, if they can really knock that out of the park. I mean, that, that's such a game changer uh, because of like the, the entire experience and what you're going to be, what people are going to be able to get. So that's going to yeah. be really cool. Which brands would you want to see doing it? And for listeners and watchers too, like which brand would you want to see getting into this? Ooh, well, I, I think, I mean, the one that I'm most excited for that's already in the works is this Ritz Carlton. Mm -hmm. um, it's so tricky though to think like, I mean. I don't know, four seasons. Like, would that be cool? Ooh, I think it yeah. would be cool. I think they would do a fantastic job at what they're creating. That would yeah. be a good one. I think I would like to see, you know, you mentioned some of these ultra lux ones, but I would yeah. like, I'm a big fan of my old Mandarin Oriental days. So I love Ooh. Mandarin Oriental, kind of that vibe, some great seafood with a little Asian flair on it. I think those uh, that's would be amazing. awesome to see. Mm -hmm. That's pretty lux. That's, yeah, that's pretty lux. I would really like to see that. And yeah, they're, they do a great job. And I still know they do a great job down here in Miami okay. and all their other ones. But I think those are good. Four Seasons, Mandarin Oriental. Let's go. Get your yes. uh, all inclusives ready. We're ready exactly. to go. Exactly. You got us. We're ready. We're lining up at the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, we've got Klaus joining us, by the way. Klaus and he agrees. Mm -hmm. All right. He likes From those Barcelona. choices we made. Oh, Shangri-La. Oh, Shangri <laughs> Look at us. We're so excited about that. Mm -hmm. hey, oh, Maria from Uruguay. Oh yeah, Maria, gosh. we got to get some all-inclusives in your country. Argentina, Uruguay are beautiful areas. Yes, I love they are very now. beautiful. Um, okay, let's switch to our next topic that we have here. This is kind of cool. So Hilton recently um, announced that they're actually extending their loyalty program, and they're really looking to reward small businesses for booking direct. Now what does this kind of mean? So basically what they're doing is they're kind of um, creating a program or extending a program that is really geared towards smaller businesses so that they are able to book business rates and offer different perks to their employees that you don't necessarily have to be a large company like an Apple or an Amazon, but you can be a smaller business. And still, um, if you have frequent, um, if you have employees and you're frequently having your employees stay at hotels, whatever that might be, having uh, conferences or meetings, um, there are advantages to for small businesses as well, too. Um, it, it's interesting because they found that in May that the business, tra basically business transient demand drove about 45 percent 
um, of its of its revenue. And then um, about oh, sorry, eighty five percent of Hilton's business transients guests are small to medium sized enterprises. So understanding mm -hmm. that when it comes to their business um, enterprises, that's a huge part of them are small to medium sized businesses. So that's pretty yes. fascinating. It's very cool to see. And I think if they can do this the right way, they'll do very well because they also want to drive meeting rooms that are sitting empty yes, and allowing like small companies, maybe like mine that has 10, 15, 20 employees that I want to mm -hmm. book a, a meeting. It's really hard to accomplish because yeah. as you know, working in the hotel, you call in, you got to wait for the meeting planner or the director of catering conference to get back yeah. to you, or I just want to get a room the next day or two days from now, order some food and have it be in the room. They're working on creating that as part of this experience mm -hmm. and then getting points built up off of that. So the more yeah. you come and the more you stay, you get rewarded because a lot of hotels, they don't do that, right? We've worked in some big yeah. hotels where you see these mega conferences come through and you know, all right, you stay with us last year, but there's no way to really track and give them bonus points and discounts mm -hmm. and extras based on the volume of money they spent. It's all comes down to your sales manager help them make that decision. So I like yeah. seeing this taken into a way where they're controlling it. I'm hoping mm -hmm. they don't do it through a th third party, right? I'm hoping they control the experience and totally. uh, no. people can book directly with them. Well, yeah. And I think that that's the thing that I thought was so cool is that they're actually going to have like an events booking site, mm -hmm. which I, I is such a, a different approach. Um, and as you said, it'll make things so much easier instead of having to always necessarily call, speak to somebody, not to say that obviously, Obviously you want to be able to call and speak yes. to people like to get, to get things done. That's the, that's the meat of um, the hospitality industry, but uh, to be able to have this as an additional option, whether it's even to just check availability, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that means, or get an idea for a certain price point, et cetera. So um, I think that that's going to be really, really interesting um, to see how that rolls out. Kind of cool. Other, yeah. The other cool part too, for a small business is, you as the owner of that business get those points where you could use it all for yourself or you can decide, all right, Sarah did awesome this week. Let me go reward her with some points where she can go take yeah. her family and stay somewhere. So all those points accumulate into one account that then can be assigned to different places. Ooh, um, this is a good question that just came in on LinkedIn, by the way. Wouldn't that alienate the travel agent? Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll give my opinion after yours. Yeah, no, no, you go first. I would I, I like that question. I think travel agents are great for a lot of things. But if I just want to book a room for my company next week and I can do it on my own, I'm going to I would like to do that. And if it's an easy way to do it right now, travel agents have great contacts. And look, we do that with part of the hospitality mentor. We book great hotels for people. Um, but I think there's a different experience with this. I still think travel agents do a fantastic job of creating awesome memory making trips. But if I want to book a meeting room down the street at the Hilton for three days from now, I don't know if I need a travel agent. Maybe I'm wrong. What do you think, Sarah? Um, well, so I don't necessarily see this as a way to replace a travel agent. Um, you know, if you're a smaller business and you can, um, and you have somebody booking the travel for your company, um, the travel agent can still book as a small, uh, on behalf of the small business. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that that's, um, I mean, I think it's, it's, yeah. it's smart. So you can to still totally have a travel agent, um, you know, booking for your business. Should you feel like the volumes there or the need is there, et cetera. Obviously it's such a personal thing, but, um, I don't think it necessarily has to replace the travel agent. I think it's more so it's the perks that it's offering small businesses. So I see it more as that. Yes. And the other part too is I think this will start to spread. I know Marriott tried something similar-ish, more of just like booking yeah. open spaces during like yeah. pandemic time. Oh, that's right. Um, but it didn't really take off. But you know, I just I just listened to the Hilton versus Marriott podcast on business wars. Yeah, I loved how they all were like basically copying each other. One would come out with something, then the other would copy it with a little twist. So I'm curious to see if this starts happening amongst all the big chains. Oh my gosh! Yeah, no, definitely. Wait, qu quick shout out to Suzanne who just joined us. Also, Kat joined us as well, too. Cap and Banks. Love it. Hey. Um, but yeah, these are, uh, it, it's really interesting because it, it, I think that it could just like enhance any sort of way that you could enhance and make the booking process easier. 
Um, you know, I, I think that it will just, it'll only behoove the, the hotel. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, are there going to be perks for it for this way or that way? Yeah, of course. But, um, but yeah, so I, I, I love that they're doing it and they're exploring different ways to do it because again, people need ease at the end of the day. So, yeah. um, I would love to see it where I can see what's available, what menu options I can book easily in packages per person. And then someone can contact me after if they need to, to make sure I'm going to show up, but just make it as easy as possible. What AV I might need in the room, right? So yeah. there's three screens, keep it simple. Yeah. Here, that's the business plan. Here's the three screens to book this room. And then we can use the points for everything we need. And, and just like Suzanne said, the white bed wars. Woo! Where yeah, everyone <laughs> started going after when Weston came out with their heavenly beds. Everyone started copying Weston oh. and Starwood and started going ultra comfy bed. So thanks Starwood for yeah, upgrading the you. bed game. <laughs> exactly. Up, Got to upgrade that. So, um, well, we can't, you know, before we kind of dive into some sort of travel topics, we can't, uh, glaze over this. This has definitely been all over, um, social media, the news, etc. Um, in regards to choice, choice hotels was offering to buy Wyndham, um, at a $7.8 billion valuation. Um, so, Steve, I know you did a little bit of a of a, a look into this. What have you been seeing, or or can you even like break down what was kind of happening for those that might not be aware? Well, this is all new news coming out, so it's flying in. But like we said, we were calling our contacts. Sarah and I were were calling people to see what we could find out, and we got some yeah. inside scoops on certain things. Is you know, Choice and Wyndham are more of the affordable kind of lodging operators Options. yeah and hilton marriott and some others are starting to get into that space where we talked mm -hmm. about kind of getting into this more extended stay and entry-level pricing and choice is realizing look we need to team up Wyndham. we're gonna we've been trying to negotiate with you for a while and we could save 150 million dollars if we team up together and really compete against these brands um, and stay relevant and Wyndham's like no i don't think we need your help and we're not going to negotiate. And then Choice came out publicly and said, mm -hmm. we're offering this much, right? And so that got yeah. spread around the news. Everyone was picking that up, that Choice is buying Wyndham. And Wyndham's like, oh, hold on. Hold on here, guys. Wait a we second. say no. Breaks. <laughs> we, we never said yes. And now you're trying to do this publicly to kind of pressure us. We don't That's want it. So now the question is, will somebody ice, somebody else buy Wyndham? Ooh. Or is Choice going to raise their price? We're going to have to see what happens. But, you know. I'm not sure where this will go, but it seems like it's a giant part of the industry. Mm -hmm. What do you think? It's definitely, yeah, definitely. If you guys, uh, because I, I know I was looking on LinkedIn, people have some strong feelings about it. And so certainly if you work for one of these properties and you have, a, because you are boots on the ground, so to speak, or just have that sort of intel, would love to hear your insights on this because I know it's definitely, um, Judging by people's responses, they certainly feel very strongly about it. Um, yeah, but people, people who bought franchises said, I yeah. want to be with Wyndham or I want to be with mm -hmm. Choice, and they didn't choose the other for a certain reason. So I've seen a lot of that. Yeah. And I'd be curious to know because I don't know, you know, per, firsthand, but what the pro, like, what are the pros and cons? I don't want to even say pros and cons, but I mean, I'm sure that there are advantages to being with one or the other whatever that might be. Um, so certainly, certainly interesting times <laughs> for sure. Um, but by the way, uh, Jim actually chimed in on the subject of beds. I know that this was kind of what we were talking about. Why so many pillows? Most of the, on the floor. Oh my gosh. I feel like we're going to have to talk about that later when we talk about yeah, the, the more pillows, <laughs> the more pillows, the better the brand. I think wait, is what they said, keep adding pillows and we're going to be better than the other brand. <laughs> wait, they got okay, two, we're doing seven. Steve, th what are your thoughts on pillows? Well, I like. <laughs> you're like you have wow. to have. Like, Listen, wow, personal we deal personal with this time. with uh, our vacation rentals. So certain owners could be partner with vacation rental um, homes. You have yeah. to have at least two people, two pillows per person yeah. in a bed, right? And so you need yeah. at least two. But I don't mind a nice little throw pillow to give a little flair if they can clean it and it can zip off. I don't want anyone's gross grossness on these pillows uh, love, staying behind i love how you're talking about throw pillows that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> but it's true you're it's right the hotel the hotel room you come in you can see which ones are the gross pillows i don't want to touch that one 
Yeah, no, I think two per person makes sense because it's, I mean, it's not like a ridiculous amount, um, but, uh, but we, I'm actually- Jim threw us off, sub we got us off subject with Jim. Jim gave us- We did, uh, we're not yeah. talking about beds and pillows. Oh my gosh, oh goodness. And when but, we got uh, Choice trying to buy Wyndham, you know, I we're going to see where this goes, but I love yeah, seeing those, those business wars, right? Just like that podcast we were just talking about. I love seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. Okay, let's switch gears a bit here. Talk about some travel topics. Um, okay, I thought this was kind of, I, I thought this was kind of interesting. So there's actually a new tool that um, is coming out. That's the airport stress calculator. Okay, um, it's going to help predict how stressful your airport experience might be. Now, I actually went and I started like clicking through this because I was like, okay, talk to me. Um, and it, so basically what you can do is you go through the portal and you say the airport that you're going to be um, flying out of, the time frame that you are going to be going to the airport, the airline, because it'll tell you the terminal, et cetera. And what it will do is basically due to based data, will kind of let you know how busy you can expect it to be. And also if the, um, the likelihood of encountering flight delays or all of that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how it can well, look, really all of that, but yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. Did you get to play with it at all? Did it show you any results yet? Is it up and running? Cause I haven't had a chance to play with it. Uh, no. Oh, like I haven't, I haven't played, like, I mean, I just, I played it for it with, um, with Los Angeles. And so I fly Delta. It's not a stressful process for me. So it's like not that big of a deal, but, um, but it is, I kind of find this ridiculous actually, if I can really be honest, <laughs> and somebody actually took the time to create this thing. And it's like, I'm sorry. If you were that stressed about going to the airport, like why are you going to the airport? You know? Yeah. It's like, like, uh, like we were talking about the other day, like I hate flying, not because of the flying part, but because of the whole experience beforehand. And yeah. so I was curious in that calculator, can I check? All right. I have a five and a seven year old. Yep. How many points up and down? Is that going to raise it? Uh, my stress level versus flying by ourselves is a little different, right? We can kind of zoom through. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. Everyone's got an app for something. So maybe somebody <laughs> will use it. Totally. I just, I don't know. I find it funny. I'm, at the end of the day, it's like, I think, that I, I think it's more so funny for headlines. You know what I mean? It's it's a funny headline thing versus like, is it actually going to like help somebody? We're like, talking about it. Yes, we are right? talking about it. But like, we, like let's say you are a anxious flyer, an anxious traveler, and you go go to this because you're like, okay, I I need to know what I'm getting into before I go to the airport, and it tells you, uh, it's going to be a pretty stressful time to fly. Like, is that going to help you? Couple extra glasses of wine. Uh, <laughs> we'll make sure we're good to go. <laughs> we know who's drinking that wine at five in the morning before their early flight. No, <laughs> five o'clock somewhere, right? You said <laughs> this. Is, wow, this is true. It is five o'clock somewhere. Nice Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville yeah. reference. Very cool. Um, All right, we'll have to check this out. So, if anyone uses that tool out there, let us know. Maybe you could tell us when it's less stressful to go and maybe we can buy a flight around that time, but that's pretty tough. We'll see. I, I think it's just ridiculous. Okay. Let's talk about um, the, oh, get TSA pre and you'll have 90% less stress. Correct. In general, I actually just did a new segment last week talking about uh, the difference of TSA pre, clear, all of that. And um, in general, yes, it is helpful, but it also depends on the airport. And uh, because some airports, just there are more travelers that travel with TSA pre-check. There are more travelers that travel with clear, et cetera. And so, um, but yes, in general, it is nice to not have to take out your laptop and do all that extra stuff when you're traveling that way. Um, okay, ready to talk about this? I, okay, so last week, uh, for those that did, may, may have missed it, we talked about um, annoying habits that people do on airplanes. Maybe not habits, but actions, behaviors. So we figured we'd bring it back home to hotels and talk about the different type of guests that um, maybe are, you know, they shouldn't be behaving that way. And um, I hate to call them annoying because I want to be nice, but like sometimes just people do ridiculous like pet things. peeves, right? Yeah, and this is not peeves. our list. This is travel no. and leisure's list. Correct. Right? So we're just we're Correct. just reviewing theirs. Correct. Definitely. That's so much that. Okay. So, uh, so kind of seven going back down the ill mannered guest. So this is the guest that just like 
doesn't have manners, is rude. rude. Yeah, rude. Jinx. Well. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Like, I've never... I've never understood that. Like you're in a public space. Like, you know what that's like. This is not a surprise, but people have that. Yeah. I mean, look, we've dealt with it. You being the concierge and me really running restaurants mm -hmm. for a long time. We get those people that come through and a lot of times they're just having a bad day, but they just yeah. don't know how to, to channel it. And so I find it as a challenge sometimes, but just be aware. Like most people are short staffed right now. Most people are just trying to give you a great experience. No one's out to get you. Yeah. Right? Just no, totally. That. No one is out to get you. I always would remind people, I was like, hey, look, I'm on your side. I'm just trying to help. And I would normally like bring them down a couple notches if they were super upset about something. Yeah. Um, so yeah. the next one, a guest with a lack of patience. Oh my gosh. That again, like, I, I, like but it's true. It's so, it, it's so fascinating to me. It, look, I get it. Stre travel stressful and you just, you want some things done. But it's like you also have to understand that sometimes it takes like a person to help get something done. And sometimes it takes time and maybe you're running out of time. Maybe you're late. But that was always the thing we would be like, just because what was it? Because your because of your ill preparation, it doesn't regard it doesn't. Oh, my gosh. I'm totally yeah. failing at this, guys. It's early morning because you're an emergency. It's not my emergency. But yeah, yeah. In that. essence, that's an easy way. But like your your ill preparation doesn't constitute an emergency for me. So mm, that's kind of it. Um, also, just know, right? Like if check-ins at four o'clock, you can't freak out if the room's not ready before yeah. four o'clock. After four, freak out all you want. That's on us. We messed up, right? If your yeah. reservations for a certain time in a restaurant, mm -hmm. that's what your reservations for. And we're going to do yep. our best to get you in. Even though you're trying to slip us a hundred bucks, I don't have a table for you. It doesn't exist. We're going to yep. do our best to get you in as quick as possible. There's only so much space and that... A and business might have. Yeah. Listeners, as we're going through this, if you have any crazy stories like that, yes, put them here. Share I'd love to some. see some of your favorites because I know you've definitely got them in your head and you can still picture that guest that's doing these things too. Yeah. Totally. Um, oh, a guest with no gratitude. They're just, they just, whether they assume it's okay uh, or just, they just assume that you're going to do whatever you're going to do. But just the simple things of just saying thank you goes a really long way. And yeah. Please and thank you. <laughs> I imagine you as concierge, especially in the hotels you worked at, creating all these giant reservations and big experiences and no thank you, no tip, nothing, just like it's expected. Yeah. I mean, I always, it's, it, and it's at the end of the day, I mean, the thank you just goes the longest, longest way in, in doing anything. Um, and, and it just, it's, it, it, again, it kind of goes back to the whole like ill mannered thing. It just, having that sort of like sense of like gratefulness that's like somebody has gone out of their way to, to, to help you. Like it didn't yeah. have to necessarily, I mean, yes, there's, they're there to do a job, but it's, if they helped you and they went ab above and beyond, like absolutely thank them. Above and sure. beyond. Be a little grateful out there. And I see Larry join. Welcome Larry from Atlanta. Yeah. Um, okay. So then there's the messy guest. This broke me actually during the pandemic, we had to <laughs> clean hotel rooms. Oh no. And there were some rooms in a luxury hotel that were just trashed yeah. and like disgusting and, you know, body liquids and blood and just gross things. And I'm just like, come on guys, like what is happening in here? Like I can yeah. only imagine what your house looks like. Yeah, no, totally. To oh my gosh. Wait. Uh, so Christopher just, he said a thank you wrapped in a $20 bill goes even further. Ha -ha. You, <laughs> you're right. It does. It does. Depending on what it is, but I love that. That's, that's I like uh, Federica's where he's saying to complain is easier than to say a thank you. Yeah. So true. true. By the way, actually, I love that Federica just mentioned that because, um, if that's something that I, if somebody like, I really make a point to compliment because all too often businesses only hear complaints and especially if somebody's going out of their way or they made me feel really good, I always try to make a point to share that compliment with the team just so that they know like, hey, look, you guys are actually doing some good things. So um, it's a nice way to kind of balance that out. Yeah, one of my um, go-tos if you're standing in a restaurant is always complimenting shoes, whether it's guys oh. or girls. Like, oh, I like those shoes. Those are nice. Those oh. are my go-to. Like, wow, thank you. Oh, oh I like that. <laughs> That's my like tip for you all today in the hotels. Use that one. Okay. Now there's the underdressed guest. Oh, oh my I God. know. You like this one. Ooh. 
for people that have been following me for a long time, I have definitely, so it's, it's funny. Cause like, obviously like I'll go to hotels and like the hotels, how classic is it to have the picture of like somebody like in their bathrobe at the hotel? And I get it. A lot of people love bathrobes unpopular opinion. I'm very well aware that this is an unpopular opinion. I actually am not a fan of bathrobes. I don't know why I never have been like, I've been gifted bathrobes and I'm always like, Hey mom, here you go. I'm regifting to you. Um, so sorry, <laughs> but people that would walk in the lobby of the hotel in their bathrobe. <laughs> what? Why are you doing that? Look, one thing, if you're wearing your bathrobe, because you're going to the spa and you're going down this way, but like you're coming down to like the lobby restaurant in your bathrobe, like, come on, really? Like, really? Yeah, that's uh, I that's feel a tough very one. strongly about this, especially in business hotels, too. That's where it's like the, the funniest. But I've worked most of my career on South Beach, uh, Miami, yeah. and one of the hardest things to do is. There are some people that come in very underdressed to breakfast and we have to nicely ask, excuse me, miss or sir, you need to have a cover up. You yeah. can't walk in here in your thong, male and female, yeah, right? Yeah, you yeah, got to yeah, make yeah. sure <laughs> you're dressed. Totally. Uh, it's tough. It's a tough one. You could just be like, I'm so sorry. In case we accidentally spill the hot tea, we don't want to burn you. Yeah. Or you don't burn people's minds with the what they're seeing here. <laughs> oh gosh. Um. Anyway, yeah. Obviously, it all depends on the destination. But I mean, you know, you're in a public space. Yeah. And Larry agrees with the house slippers should be banned from the hallway, let alone oh. the lobby. I also don't like slippers either. <laughs> Where are you staying? We're staying at luxury hotels, Larry. Oh this God, is happening in these places. Where are y'all staying? <laughs> My gosh, yeah. clothes are not optional in the lobby. I love this. Exactly. Somebody finally gets it. My gosh, I thought I was the only person that was just like, oh gosh. Anyway, okay. So we'll kind of like quip. Oh, what is this? How about when guests keep coming back to take complimentary drinks and snacks from the check-in welcome table when they've already been in-house for several days? <laughs> uh, you know, those uh those cookies and the, I mean, the macaroons and you know, they're all coming back for those. But you know once in a while, but don't take the whole thing for 10 Don't people. take the whole thing. I get it. I get it. We've we've seen it all. Um, okay, so yeah, so that was actually all right. funny because that was actually the number one. We there's the noisy guest, so those that are just so, like not aware of their noise level. Um, by the way, I like uh, Jamie Foxx, for example, used to, it's so weird when you like live and work in, uh, you know, certain big cities, it's interesting how you might have certain celebrities come and stay with you all the time. And mm -hmm. Jamie Foxx would always come in and I don't know. If, and if anybody has ever had him stay at their hotel, but Jamie Foxx. Oh, you have. Okay. Yes. So you probably know he loves to sing. Yes. And DJ. Yes. And he will sing as he walks through the lobby. I like cause a, I'm just like, bro. Do you want to go under like cover or you want to let everybody know that Jamie Foxx is in the house? Apparently he wants to let everybody know Jamie yes. Foxx is in the house, but he would literally, he would always come through. And by the way, it, I mean, in that particular case, it's also a little bit like, okay, well, it's Jamie yeah, Foxx. Cool. But again, it's being mindful of your noise yeah. level and when you're coming in a hotel, but you could have like a gaggle of women that are there for a bachelorette party and they're all like, man. Yeah, whatever yeah. you know and in the rooms if you're connecting rooms like being yeah. there where you're at but also like we talked about this last week speakerphone guests turn oh off God, your speakerphone no. we don't want to hear your music no. or who no. you're talking to no yeah no and, speakerphone. or speakers by the pool deck i don't want to hear your be the dj with the hotel yeah, music no, okay for me Anyhow, probably, yes, are we complaining exactly. too much? Maybe. No, we're, we're not. We're not. No, we're not complaining too much. It just, it's one of those things that we can all agree on some of these things. And then the final was the guest with the sticky hands, which uh, Jeremy brought up a great example about that. Just the people that want to just kind of take things, whether it's from notepads to pillows to anything in the room, salt shakers. I've, my mother has maybe done that before, not throwing her under the bus. But I just did. A um, lot of people, <laughs> we have a LinkedIn user yeah. unnamed. Usually Americans are so loud. I, yeah, I Sorry. think uh, that's true. There's a lot of that us that is, are very that's loud. True. That is true. That's not us, us, but yes, there are a lot that are. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So we did um, top seven. So number one, the guest that steals stuff. I thought it was actually sticky hands that you were shaking hands with someone who had sticky hands. But Oh, wait, stop. Are you serious? No, <laughs> It's like, what are you? Come on, Steve, get with the program. Come on, come on. Oh, this is great. 
ridiculous. Uh, do you have something to share with us for the real time recap this week? Real time recap this week. Look, my kids were home sick, so we were home the whole time. But, you know, shout out to Uber Eats for delivering and creating a technology that I'm yep. grateful for to get us stuff that we need when we can't leave the house. So shout yeah. out to you all. Definitely. I was in Austin this weekend and I stayed at a Sheraton in Georgetown. So technically Georgetown, Texas, just a little bit north of Austin. Uh, the whole staff there was really awesome, really sweet. Uh, it was cool too, because um, that it's Georgetown, Texas was right in line with a good part of the um, eclipse that happened this past weekend. Oh, so we had our right. whole family there and it was really great because um, they actually had a couple of extra uh glasses so that people could watch the eclipse. So we happen to have our own, but um, there were also a couple extra as well too. And I just thought that it was a really nice touch um, so that when, um, so we were all kind of able to check out the eclipse together and it was pretty neat. So again, it's something simple like that, that you can do um, that really can make a big difference. So love that. I saw it, I saw it on social. Your mom looks like a lot of fun. Is she a lot of fun? She looks like she was having a great time, oh, a good person to be around. But- my mom is a lot of fun. My aunt is even crazier. And no, I'm kidding. No, they're they're all fun people. And I have to say, like, we there's nothing like a like a good wedding where it's like everybody can just kind of dance it out. So that's always always a fun time. Really good memories. Yes. Okay. Right before we wrap up, our hospitality quote for today is: uh, Do you want to read it? The great advantage of a hotel is that it is a refuge from home life. By George Bernard Shaw. I love this because how often do we think about going to a hotel is like, I mean, that's kind of like, we want it to be like a home away from home, but it's also nice that it's like, you just feel a little bit, it it feels a little bit different than home too. Mm -hmm. I like sitting in hotel lobbies. I'm a hotel nerd. So like sometimes like after meetings, I'll just kind of hang out. I like that murmur in the lobby. I love the sounds. I like a well-run place and I like hanging out in them. Yeah, no, there's definitely something really nice about it that it just, it it puts you in a different space, a different environment. Um, If I'm ever looking to just even get some extra work done, uh, I find myself actually um, more likely to find myself like in a hotel lobby than say like a coffee shop. So again, there's something about it, but it's, it's this nice way to kind of like just change things up a little bit. And it's a great intersection, cross section of individuals that you'll be, uh, that you can experience and see and meet from around the world. That's what's so cool about hotels. And I also like to, when we're working from them, I'm going to yeah. do a ranking of the best hotels to work from because some of these lobbies have the free coffee that I enjoy and they oh are God. very nice to work from. Am, am I going to call you? Are you going to be part of the Costco free sample crowd? <laughs> no, 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 no. But I do like those places. And yeah. my rule for us, just we're on it, we're going along here is if you're going to hang out in a hotel lobby, you got to buy something and work from and you can't bring a whole setup, just your laptop. No speakerphone. Oh, gosh. Yeah, no speakerphone. No bueno. <laughs> That's it for my Spanish for today. Um, okay. So, well, this is a fun episode. I know we went a little we bit. We covered a lot. We, we did a great a job here. I Hopefully. love doing these with you and I'm excited yeah. for next week already. We should do this more than once. I know. I know. So that being said, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, if you have a question or a topic that you want us to cover next week, let us know. Send us any, either of us a, a DM. Um, if you happen to be closer to one or the other, send both of us, whatever it is, mm-hmm. uh, but let us know. We're happy to cover different topics. Um, uh, also, if there's something going on, just shoot it over our way. Uh, also, be sure to sign up for the GMC report as well. Um, you can go to the Good Morning Hospitality, uh, sign up there as well. Um, so that you can stay uh, up to date with everything that's happening in regards to venture capital or private equity and funding with uh, different companies uh, in the hospitality space. And yeah. you want to kind of wrap this up? Yeah, yeah, make sure to subscribe, like, and ring the bell, right? <laughs> make sure that you know when we're coming back on. And I love seeing all the familiar faces here that we see week after week. We appreciate yeah. you joining us. And if you're listening to this on the on the replay in your car, make sure to check out our new entry intro video. Uh, oh, yes. Came out really good. So we're excited to see it again next week. Pretty fun. No, this has been a great show. And as always, so thankful when you get to join us live and more exciting stuff coming next week. Yeah. See you all next week. Yeah. Bye, guys.